YouTube! I hope you're all doing well, and may the RNG gods bless those of you in search of your PS5. Earlier on, I was attempting to make an ongoing series for Spider-Man Miles Morales, but the game was a bit shorter than I had anticipated. It's done. So instead, I decided to share my thoughts on the second half of Spider-Man. Off the bat, I just want to say that I love this game, especially the second act. The majority of the first half for me was spent learning the new mechanics, figuring out what kind of playstyle I preferred, and kind of just staring at reflections because ray tracing. And obviously trying to finish all the trials in Ultimate because I'm a tryhard and I still ultimately failed at them. Oh my, but the second half. This for me is when the game kind of came alive. For the most part, this game's story exists on a pretty linear trajectory. Swinging across the cityscape with all the finesse and styles Maud had in Into the Spider-Verse, players are put on about a 9 hour journey, give or take, to discover the villain's secret identity and then foil their evil plan. By the way, the villain, whew, what a twist, never saw that coming, I can't believe it was Genki. Just kidding. It was Finn, who, by the way, looks nothing like her comic book counterpart, which I gotta say for me was a much welcomed redesign for the Tinkerer. I mean, look at her equipment, her shiny gloves, sword, I mean, her stuff particleizes, if that's even a word. And then after all that, you save the city. It's a pretty standard Spider-Man story, except it's done really well. The set pieces in the final moments looked bright and vibrant and you can really tell that in those last sequences the developers at Insomniac really wanted to sell you on the ray tracing through its snow particles and all those mirrors that you kind of see at the end. You even have the introduction of Prowler's story and it's one that I kind of really like. It starts with his misguided attempt to kind of keep you safe which inevitably leads to a fight sequence that if not okay is actually one of the only boss fights that you get in the game. The story itself is filled with betrayal after betrayal after betrayal that you kind of start to wonder, is this Game of Thrones? And like Game of Thrones, my favorite part came when characters had the opportunity to redeem themselves for the better. Miles, no! Oh, hey! Man, what an entrance! It's really easy to say that the story itself is predictable or that this game, to some, may seem like a glorified DLC from the previous PS4 iteration. But for me, I found this to be a great standalone game and a wonderful introduction into the Miles Morales mythos. Say what I always loved about the character of Spider-Man is that he was a character that fans could easily identify with. I have to tell you something. There is nothing you could ever do or ever be that would make me stop loving you. Nada. You give me strength, Miles. That's all a hero really is. Someone who's brave for the people they love. Shout out to all moms, man. Just a guy who doesn't give up. In moments like these, you get to see what makes Miles, like Peter Parker before him, human. Insomniac put Miles' faults, insecurities, and his mistakes all on full display creating the kind of superhero that Stanley always intended Spider-Man to be. You know what it is? It's the ones that are the most interesting and the ones that the, the viewers and the readers of comics can most relate to. If there's something about the character that makes you like the character and care about the character. Now, I think we've done it with a lot of different ones. Certainly, Peter Parker. And that's what Insomniac did. They made me care about this Miles Morales. It's what makes this game so dang bingeable. Yes, the combat is stylish and feels amazing. The web swinging is smooth. The graphics are eye-catching. 
the costumes are funky fresh, the voice acting is A1, and the enemies are kind of varied. But none of that matters if the Spider-Man game doesn't capture the essence of Spider-Man. Otherwise, you just have Spider-Man 3. Get me giant lizards or you're fired! Should have known that was too easy. Guess I'll start looking in Gramercy Park. Now, I do have my grievances with the game, and the second fight with Rhino is, for me, a good place to start. You like my new color? I'm going to make this way harder than it needs to be. How many times am I going to die in this boss fight? Bruh. Whoa! Oh no! Oh! Oh my god. No! Every time! What? What hit me? What? I, I, I lost him when he was down. Those lines on the floor are just intense. You know what I need to do? I need to call out the homies. Bruh. Oh my god. Let's go. Oh, I think I got him this time. Goodness. But overall, aside from a glitch here or there, I, I don't have much bad to say about this game that you probably haven't already heard. Do I wish it was longer? Yes. Had I hoped that there'd be more bosses? Definitely. Do I think that the podcast chiming in every second were a bit too much? Eh. I will say though that as flashy and as cinematic as the combat is, I do wish that there existed a bit more depth to this combat. At times during my playthrough, especially in the second half, I would find myself hoping and wishing for harder enemies. I did find those in the Roxxon Lab side quest, but returning from that back to the main quest, those enemies that kind of followed seemed a bit more like pushovers in comparison. Good luck. I'm at a 34 point combo. Okay, I, now it's gone. Maybe that's just something personal though because I am a bit of a sadist who enjoys games of the Soulsborne genre. But like most people, I can't say enough good things about the gameplay, the web swinging, and the story design. When I finished the game, I'll be honest, it made me feel some type of way. I knew it. I knew it. Miles, I love you, man. You could have died, man. Oh, my eyes are starting to sweat. I can't believe this is how Miles is going out. Wait, what's she doing? What are you? Oh my god, it's Finn. <sighs> I can't. It's okay. I can't just let go. Wait. Go. Oh my. <gasps> He's alive. Oh my god. Is 
everyone? Okay. We're safe. All of us. <laughs> oh, no, nah, buddy. She's gone. You know what? Maybe that didn't kill her, though. to cry we got to see this young hero so unsure of himself grow into his own just comparing miles first and last scenes walking down harlem put the biggest smile on my face i never expected to enjoy or like spider-man miles morales story for the ps5 as much as i did but they really did manage to capture what made spider-man such a special superhero a relatable character, a young teenager going through his own problems, and someone who has to make the hard decisions every single time through his lifespan as a hero. From start to finish. That I mean that could have been any of us. They're counting on me. Probably not you specifically. I, I think it's a metaphor. I love seeing Spider-Man's altruistic nature collide with Finn's moral ambiguity and resolution to take down Roxxon. It's Almost impossible to deny the political stance that Insomniac decided to take, incorporating real world issues like gentrification, mistrust with the police, and the Black Lives Matter movement. All this helped me to appreciate the game even more, especially the developers choosing to put a more honest take into a game in such a turbulent time. It really helped to craft a world that felt lived in, and it added another level of immersion to the world of Harlem. In the end, I invested, I would say, about 23 hours? I don't know if New Game Plus on Ultimate Difficulty is something I'll jump back into immediately, but this is definitely a game that sets a strong tone for what's to come, and in a year like 2020, it's honestly something we all need. A game that not only makes you feel like Spider-Man, but also helps you to remember what it means to be part of a community. If you guys enjoyed this review or this take on this type of content, let me know in the comments below if at any point it made you smile or you just felt like you enjoyed the content feel free to give it a like or thumbs up and if you want to stay tuned for some more content be sure to hit that subscribe button and to turn on those notifications thank you all so much for your support and just dropping by i hope to keep doing this and i'll definitely hope to see you in the next one wishing you all nothing but the best this is andrew and i'll catch you guys all in the next one crazy as life kids only one thing really matters the people you love you your mom finn genki even your uncle. Keep the folks you care about close to your heart, and you'll never go wrong. Happy birthday, big man. You are my reason for being brave. Oh, man. I was not ready for that.